Today is the day we drill a hole in the roof. Follow along. Hmm? Decided to go down next to the, uh, behind the shower wall. So we're gonna hop up on the roof, put a hole on the top, and then there's gonna be a wall, probably this, the top of the wall, which I'm gonna need a longer bit to get down through that. So cross your fingers. All right, so, so we determined last time that there's a wall right here. This is the vent for one of the gray tanks. It goes down into the kitchen cabinets below there. Um, this is the shower and right about here is where the shower valve is on the wall so I know uh, we're going to get into this wall and hopefully be able to go straight down behind the kitchen cabinets and then into the basement area of the RV. So let's cross our fingers that this goes smooth. Alright guys, I'm interrupting this video real quick. If you guys are getting value out of this type of video, please like and subscribe. Leave us a comment, let us know how we're doing. It really helps us out and we really want to get more videos out there to you guys. So on with the rest of the video. The key is you want to push this insulation out of the way so these auger bits don't take the entire insulation out of your attic space and wind around. Oh, I see daylight. Okay, so we got the hole in the roof and I am sending an electrician fish stick down the hole and she's gonna go down, Sabrina's gonna go down in the kitchen and hopefully see this behind the, uh, the cabinet there and tie a string to it so that we can pull the wire down eventually. So let's, uh, let's cross our fingers. Looks like she's got it. And there we go, we got the string up to the roof. And uh, next thing we're gonna do is put the box on and uh, we'll be ready for the wires. All right, now that we have the hole in the roof, I am going to be putting our junction box in. All I did was buy a four by four by two watertight box from Home Depot. And it comes with a cover, I gotta put that in at the end. And I bought some glands off of Amazon. I actually bought a whole sampler pack for almost slightly more than uh, a couple of the solar suppliers were just selling each one of these for. I think they want about two or three bucks a piece and I got a whole assortment of them for about 12 bucks on Amazon so I'll link that. But um, you know a few bucks, probably six, seven bucks for the box, a couple bucks for the glands and I'm going to put a hole in the bottom of this where, so it correlates with the hole in the roof and that's where my solar wires are going to come through. Um, and then we're also going to put a pull string going from up here down with it in case I want to add more solar or you know another antenna type wire we boost or something like that in the road I have a penetration go all the way down and I don't have to snake it again I'll just hook up to the, the pull string and yank my cables up so I'm um, gonna do that next and string this down with our power wires just drill the hole in the bottom of this box it's gonna line up with the hole there so my solar wires are gonna go in and you can see the pull string um, this is what we'll string the cable to and then also keep uh, pull another pull string with it so later on we can send another wire down if we need to.
now we have to go down. You want me to get down underneath? Well, we're going to have to probably push those fish sticks in. So you're saying I got to get them out of the freezer? Yes. Waka waka. <laughs> Not cool. Right. <laughs> This is where the furnace lives. And we're gonna send it, send it straight through behind the water heater into the storage bay. Pretty easy. Easy peasy. See you there. <laughs> so good practice when you're first working with a solar panel, whether it's been in storage like ours have or you just purchased it, is take your voltmeter, um, get some sun on the panel, and just test that it's actually working. Uh, you'd hate to go through the process of mounting your brackets, putting it on your roof, uh, just to figure out that the solar panel is defective or it's had some issues. So this one is actually putting out about 20 volts, which is right where we need to be, and uh, it's good to go. Um, I've decided to use the 400 watts of Renogy panels that we already had. We had these off our old travel trailer. These are 100 watt panels apiece. We have four of them. Uh, just due to, we, we definitely want to get a lot more solar down the road and I was really wrestling with going, just spending the money now and getting a bunch of large panels and getting us up to 1,000, 1,200 watts, but considering the times right now, um, we're filming this during the quarantine lockdown, so I figure instead of spending money, let's just use what we have for now. And I can always add one more of these panels, these 100 watters, to get us a total of 600 watts on the existing charge controller that we have. Later if we want to add more, which we will, we're going to add probably a larger solar bank, maybe another 300 watt, maybe two 300 watt panels, and then we'll just turn another wire down to our basement storage and probably do a second charge controller at that point. But for now this gets us going, gets us at least 400 watts on the roof. Uh, we have the one Battleborn lithium battery already, we're going to utilize that. And I think for the time being, I'm just going to have us on a 12 volt system. We're not going to buy the inverter just yet. We're just going to run our basic lights, our water pumps, um, you know, all the stuff that can run off a 12 volt that you kind of need. And then if we have to power our 120 side, we have the generator or we have little plug in uh, inverter that we can use, you know, kind of the car or the one that mounts in your car or whatever. So today I want to show you guys the brackets that I bought. Uh, previously, I had these Z-bar, Z-brackets, and I bought another set thinking this is what I was going to use, but then I really thought about it. Um, I would probably avoid using these on an RE roof just because the problem I had last time was when you bolt these down, this part goes to the bottom of your solar panel like this and you get a bolt right in here to hold it in place and then this part you screw to the roof of your RV and then you're di going to die core the crap out of this to keep it waterproof. The problem is if you ever want to service this solar panel at that point you really have no way of getting to this bolt to take that solar panel off and that's the problem that I had when removing these. You would have to remove all the die core, take the screws out of the roof itself which you know the more times you take that screw in and out you're just going to wear that opening and you know taking the die core off and removing this because I had the bottom of it glued right down it's it's really a pain in the butt to remove it at this fastening point where you want to remove it at the bottom of the solar panel which you don't have access to so hopefully that makes sense um, unless you're hundred percent sure that these solar panels are never going to come up you're never going to want to reseal your roof you're never going to want to service any of it these are cheap and they're easy but I decided against them this time then I did a search for adjustable side mount brackets and actually I found the Renogy ones 
they come with all the hardware that you need and they mount from the bottom like so but the foot itself that amounts to your roof is a separate piece so this is going to mount like this obviously I got to tighten all this down So this part's going to mount to your roof and get permanently die cored and sealed in. But if you ever had to access it, you can undo these bolts right here. Plus this is going to allow you to adjust your solar panel to slope up or down. So if you put this one lower and this one higher, you're going to be able to slope it toward the sun or off the side of the RV. Um, I just like the idea of these a lot better. Or if you just want it flat, it's going to go like this. Granted, they're not as low profile as the other ones, but having the option of undoing them and servicing the solar panel and your roof later I think was valuable to me. So that's something that I'm going to try out with these and uh, like I said we're going to put this 400 watts up today and just use that for now and then as we can grow into the system we'll add more to it down the road. Just trying to figure out where to put these so that we have room for future expansion and also looks aesthetically pleasing and we have room to walk on the roof to service things so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put two sets of series panels wire two one set in series one set in series and then we're gonna parallel those two sets together uh, basically if we're getting Sun from this side these are gonna be taking the brunt of it and if we're getting Sun from this side they're going to be taking the brunt of it. So if we put them all in series, if we had shade over here, it would pretty much knock the whole system out. This way it gives us a good balance of voltage and amperage going down to the charge controller and um, maximizing the sun that we get on the RV. Cock and screw them. Good old friend die core. generous amount of die core underneath which is going to help screw this down or glue this down all right so we put die core underneath the brackets put our screws through so it seals up the hole kind of glues it down and then the last step is just you want to cover all your screw holes, your screw tops with more die core, and kind of the edges. Once that lays down, it's going to have a nice seal on your screws. All right, so here is the final product with all of our solar panels attached and wires neatened up. We ended up grabbing two more, so we have a total of 600 watts up here on the roof, and we neaten up all the cables and attached them with some Eternabon tape strips just to get them down and what we have here is three panels in series on the right side and then three more panels over here and those are in series as well and then they combine together in parallel to go down to the charge controller all right guys so we are done on the roof as you saw all of our solar panels are attached and on the next episode I'm going to show you down below in our storage compartment how everything got wired together and how everything is going to work for us at this phase of the install and then eventually obviously like we said we're going to add more batteries and we're going to add more solar and just kind of grow into the system so stay tuned for our next episode we're going to release it shortly and we'll see you on that one thanks guys like and subscribe